Hello Internet, I am the Hero of Julios once again with another One Piece card game video. Uh, in this video, I wanted to try my hand at making custom cards. There's a custom card maker, you can find it um, via a few discords and I, uh, I'll leave a link in the channel itself for it. Um, it's really well made, I, I definitely like it as a system. Uh, it's updating every now and then, so it's a very good way to try and make your own custom cards. Uh, so the theme I decided to go with is improving the idea of stage cards. As it stands right now in the card game, there is one really, really good stage card. That is the Moby Deck. Unfortunately, it got banned because it was too good. So the thought experiment I had going on here was some stages like Impel Down and Any Slobby they see some use, but they are not a core requirement to a deck's success or failure. And that's kind of how stages should be treated. They are helpful, but they're not mandatory for the deck to succeed in every match it goes into. Otherwise, what would be the point, because you can only have four of it. Without further ado though, let's go into my very first set of promo stage cards. I have made two for every single color, so we're just going to start off with red. Uh, the very first one I made is the Going Merry. This three cost to play red stage is a straw hat crew type card, which means it can be searched with things like Nami. Uh, it's activate main ability. You may rest this stage and give up to one of your opponent's characters minus 1000 power during this turn. It's basically the opposite of the Thousand Sunny, where instead of powering up one of your characters, it weakens an enemy's character. I feel like this is stronger than the Thousand Sunny though because it, it's more about powering up your entire board against one specific target rather than powering up one of your characters for a single attack. For example, if you had a 5,000 power character on the enemy board and you had nothing but 4,000 characters on board, for just the cost of resting this stage, you can now swing with three 4,000 characters at one 5,000 power character rather than powering up a 4,000 to 5 and swinging at it. This allows you for three swings, which will most likely end in that character being actually destroyed. Very strong against future cards coming out like the Kiros from set 4. The next stage card I made was with Zoro and Whitebeard in mind, or I guess I should say the opposite of them in mind. Uh, Windmill Village is a one cost to play red stage of the East Blue variety. It's activate main ability once per turn. If your leader's name contains monkey, give up to one rested dawn card to your leader or one of your characters. This is the exact same ability as the starter deck Nami, as Haruta from set 3, and the same as the starter deck Luffy leader card. The reason I have this listed as a leader containing monkey is this would easily get abused by Zoro. I mean, already Zoro has very low cost characters, and as a result, it's really easy for him to power up those characters already. Imagine being able for Zoro to play out a buggy for one cost and then immediately attaching that Dawn to their leader. It, it just, I feel like it could snowball very badly. However, this works great for the strategies already established by the current starter deck Luffy and Garp. Because Garp would, you know, want you to move your Dawn cards around and the starter deck Luffy already does it himself, now you'll just be able to do it twice. It also fits the theme that all three of Luffy's relatives are from the East Blue and Windmill Village is an important place to all three of them. It's where Luffy was born and raised, it's where Garp left Luffy and Ace to be raised, and it's where Dragon met Sabo, and while I don't think this is what sparked his revolution, it is definitely a very important part of the Revolutionary Army's history, thanks to, in part, Sabo. Moving on to green cards, we have the two-cost stage Arlong Park, a Fishman, East Blue, and Arlong Pirate stage, just like the leader card that this is going to go with. Its activate main ability is you may rest this stage. Up to one East Blue type leader or character card on your field gains a thousand power during this turn. This is the exact same effect as the Thousand Sunny. However, I feel that this is way more powerful as a green card than as a red card. 
because with a green card, you give that power up to something and it will probably swing multiple times, allowing you to get a lot more bang for your dawn. Whereas in red, you're most likely only swinging once and you're better off just using that dawn for something else to establish board presence. Arlong Park was made with East Blue in mind though to prevent it from being abused from things like Eustace Kid. The next stage card that I made was made before the announcement of the uh, Birdcage card, so I didn't really see that coming. I think the Birdcage card is incredibly strong for its cost, so I might be changing the cost of the Smile Factory. This Don Quixote Pirates green stage card costs 7 Dawn to play, but at the end of your turn it sets up to one of your Dawn cards as active. Its trigger lets you rest up to one of your opponent's leaders or characters, so even if you get stuck with this in your life stack, it's still a very powerful card. It is pretty much the same ability as the upcoming Doflamingo leader, which allows you to set two of your Dawn cards as active, and with the Smile Factory on top of that, you have three Dawn that you can defensively use. Combining this with the upcoming leader Doflamingo, you'll have a whopping 3 Dawn that you can just always have on hand for your counter cards, and being able to spend that same 3 Dawn during your turn. If I was going to change any card I was making though, I would probably be most open to lowering the cost of this one, as 7 is a pretty steep price. I'm just worried about it being abused in the early game, so I don't I didn't want to make it something too cheap. Moving on to blue, we have the two cost stage card, Rain Dinners, a Baroque Works card. Its activate main ability, once per turn, look at three cards from the top of your deck and place them at the top of the deck in any order. Its trigger lets you draw one and trash one. The reason I made this card was so that the blue crocodile leaders would have a lot more manipulation to their um, top of their deck, but I didn't want to make it so powerful that you didn't use it in tandem with things like Perona or the blocker Doflamingo, because with Rain Dinners, you have to put the cards back on top. Yes, you get to choose what order they're in now, but it doesn't allow you to just deny those three cards. The other blue card I created was specifically for the Nami leader from set 3. Kokoyashi Village, a 3 cost to play East Blue stage card. Its activate main costs you 2 Dawn. You may rest this stage, discard one card from your hand, then you may trash one card from the top of your deck. It is designed to be a little extra push, but not something that you would probably use every single turn. Mostly the Kokoyashi Village would be good for A, the couple extra trashings that you might need near the end of the game, and B, discard fodder for its own effect. You only need one Kokoyashi Village to be actually played in your stage area, the other three in your deck can be the fodder needed for the trashing. The reason I made it cost 2 was because Nami players tend to leave a lot of extra Dawn up, which meaning they would, you know, have an extra 2 Dawn that they could spend, and then they would have less Dawn to defend themselves with, thus giving their opponents a fighting chance. I'm trying to balance these cards with the idea of both the player and their opponent having a fair fight. Next up in purple, I have the most complex card that I made for this, Gran Tesoro a film stage card that costs 4. Its activate main ability lets you Dawn minus 1 to reveal the top card of your deck. If it is a character card, you add it to your hand. If it is an event card, you return one Dawn card from the field to your Dawn deck. And if it is a stage card, add it to the top of your life cards face down. Gran Tesoro, the entirety of film gold in fact, was a story of gambling and risking everything, so I figured a stage card should have a bit of a gamble to it. Now, you could circumnavigate the negative part by just running no events, but now you're running the risk that you have no events with which to defend yourself. So, you know, take from that what you will. It's also good in that the other Grand Tesoros that you draw later on in the game if you get lucky and it happens to be on your top deck, it ends up giving you one extra life card to protect yourself. The next stage card I made, I 
feel like I could have done something better with this. I was having a hard time because weirdly enough, purple, in my opinion, has the most balanced stage cards in the game right now. I think all of the stage cards for purple are perfectly fair and designed for the decks they have. Mr. Three's headquarters, however, is just kind of a gag stage card. It's a Baroque Works, it's purple, and it costs two. Its activate main is to Don minus one. One of your characters cannot be KO'd in battle by strike attribute characters until the end of your opponent's turn. There are plenty of threatening strike attribute characters out there, so this isn't a terrible card, but it is something that, yeah, I could see it not being very good. I designed it with the purple yellow crocodile coming up in set 4 in mind, since it gains something for Dawn Minusing, and therefore effectively makes this ability free. But I could see ways to improve this card, and if I ever make another video like this, maybe I'll revisit this one idea in particular. Moving on to black cards, we have the 2 cost stage Puffing Tom, a Water 7 slash World Government card. Its trigger allows you to play this card out, but its activate main once per turn, you trash one card with a type including CP to give up to two of your opponent's characters minus one cost during this turn. I think this works great in the Rob Lucci deck, considering you want Cypher pull cards in the trash for your other effects, and you want to be able to minus the cost of your opponent's characters. I could see changing this to giving one character minus two, but there has to be a reason they made Soap Sheep a card, so I figured finding another way to get that effect into a deck might be something worth pursuing. The other black card I made is the 3 cost to play Shells Town, a Navy stage. During your turn, when one of your characters with a type including Navy attacks, give up to one of your opponent's characters minus one cost during this turn. Because of how black works, minusing the cost of an opponent's character is important. And the only way this card could really go crazy is if all five of your characters have already attacked this turn. Thanks to things like Summoning Sickness, you wouldn't have to worry about this being a problem, you know, because you, you couldn't just play a character and throw them forward. Rush isn't really something in black. Finally, the reason I made Shells Town the stage was actually because of the promo Captain Morgan that has a very similar effect. Personally, of the cards I made for this video, I think this one is my favorite. Our penultimate card is the Mermaid Cafe, a yellow merfolk stage that costs two. The card's trigger lets you play this card, and during your opponent's turn, all of your characters with a cost of two or less and a type including merfolk gain blocker. As it stands right now in the game, that's not a lot of options. But I'm still waiting on Merfolk support, so I didn't want to make anything that was too crazy until I see where Bandai's trying to go with the Merfolk strategy. And finally, Vinsmoke Castle, a yellow stage that costs one and is of the Vinsmoke family type. Its activate main once per turn. You may trash one card from your hand and rest this stage. If you and your opponent have a total of two or less life cards, add the top card of your deck to the top of your life stack. If you are winning, like your opponent has zero life and you have two, this is a highly abusive card because you are already in the victory and you are bringing yourself even more above them. But on the other side, if you're losing horribly and your opponent has two life, you can give yourself a fighting chance by putting a life card back on top of your life stack, especially in yellow, where a lot of cards need a life card in your life stack to begin with. I chose two to be the number because I didn't want this to be something that could be horribly abused early game, but I also didn't want it to be something that could only happen super late game. So I figure two life is a pretty good sweet spot. Maybe I'd up the cost of this card, but again, this is me making custom cards for the very first time, so I myself, not being a game designer, am still trying to work out the kinks myself. So with that, these are the 12 stage cards that I would have made for the One Piece card game if I was a designer, or at least this would be my first draft. 
I would love to hear what you have to say in the comments below because I would love to do a video like this again. I do have some ideas for event cards that interact with stages because I think one of the main reasons Bandai hasn't made a lot of stage cards is because we as the players don't have a lot of ways to get rid of stage cards. As it stands right now, aside from Sky Slicer and Sacred Jewel, there are no ways to get rid of stage cards right now in the current game of One Piece. Which means if a stage card is too powerful, like the Moby Dick, there's no way to stop it once it's on the board. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you would like to see another video like this, or if you had your own ideas for custom cards. I might even start a Discord if there's a big enough demand for it. But as always, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. This is the Hero of Julios, Xing out.